I'm going to talk to you now about a super important part of research, a super important part of video taping. Really important for you, really important for your teacher. You need to understand how incredibly important it is to get these cameras in the right location. Now what you see back here is an array of camera locations. And what we've done at our golf school, especially here at Doral, is do a tremendous amount of testing over the years to see where that camera should be so we, should, we can put the cameras in the exact same locations every time. One of the things that I've brought to teaching is the superstation. And in each superstation, we have fixed camera locations. A fixed camera location means you get the exact same view. You get the exact same picture. Therefore, you can compare from day to day, week to week, year to year, when you're looking at video. Now what you need to understand is when you put this camera too close to you, like this camera is, what you see in a lot of indoor teaching facilities, they've got the camera, sometimes like this camera, only four yards behind me. That is way too close. When I take a driver, a 45 inch degree driver, and swing this driver back, you can see how it looks like it's going way to the inside for one thing, and the head of the, cam uh, the club looks about this big when you, go, when you go back. It's just gigantic. It takes over the whole frame just about. And the worst thing of all this, depending on where you put the camera, I can have your swing look any way you want it to look. The more outside it is, the more in to out your swing is, the more inside it is, inside the line, the more your swing will look like it's going out. So what I've seen in golf research and golf videotaping is random videotaping and therefore you get random information. It's not consistent. Now no one has been more fanatical ever in the history of the world than Carl Welty in filming correctly. And I want to go over a few things that Carl and I have done for 35 years in filming and videotape so that when we compare swing to swing when we go down the target line we are getting the same result the same information the same research so when we look at a player we can see if he's got an open stance a closed stance if he takes it inside outside if where the club is at the top of the swing and most importantly I can tell you what your path is of your golf club through impact and out past impact. Now to do it right, you've got to get that camera way back. You see that way back camera there? You actually can't get the camera too far back. All you can do is get it too close. What Carl has taught me is we need that camera eight yards behind the golf ball at a minimum. And if we don't, we've got to adjust slightly. But the further back you get, the less distortion you get. Also, when you film right down the target line, you have three points to look at. You've got a camera, a ball, and a target. And you can line up consistently. When you start to put the camera inside the target line, let me just show you what can happen. If I line up closed, now am I supposed to put the camera over here? If I line up open, do I put the camera between my toe line and my, and my, to and my golf ball? Where am I putting the camera? Uh, and a lot of players, by the way, play off the line. Great players. So I'd like to know how open a player is. And when I film down the target line, because I'm going straight down the line, I can see how open Freddie Couples is, or Jack Nicklaus, or Lee Trevino. We can look at anyone there and see how far off the, the target line they are. Sometimes we'll, we'll check to see if a player is getting off by aiming to the right. Even tour players will tend to aim too far to the right. When we film at PGA Tour events and LPGA Tour events and European PGA Tour events, when our people that film, could be an instructor, could be somebody that we pay to film, they might film all day and just get a few really quality clips. That's because there's a lot of people in the gallery. We can only get to the right spot. If you're standing with the camera behind this tee box, this is the 14th hole at, at Doral where we have a PGA Tour event. If we get that camera set up in a perfect location, but the player goes over here and tees off over here, the clip's no good. So we've got to be able to get right behind that person, right down the target line. And then if they hit a terrible shot, we'll also throw out that clip. We'd like to get a player when they hit a good golf shot so we can record where that shot went. If they do hit a bad shot, we will record that and then go see possibly why it happened. 
consistency in the way you videotape is crucial. A couple of the ways that I see other teachers film. Too close, they go inside the target line. What they're trying to get is a line right on the shaft, right between the hands and the toe line. Now you can film that way if you can do it all the time the same way consistently. Another thing that I've always thought is very interesting in filming is when they put the camera down low. You know, I have never given a lesson down here. I don't teach down here. I stand up and watch. I don't know what you do when you watch a tournament. I don't know how many times you get down here to watch a golf swing, but it gives you a very different perspective. I can tell you that, and it changes everything that you see from standing up here. So the height of the camera makes a tremendous difference, and it makes a lot more difference the more you put the club, or the camera, excuse me, inside the target line. Now, how do we know that? Because we take cameras and put them in every location and we make a swing, the same swing with the camera in different places. And you would not believe the difference that you see when you move that camera and, and not move it too much. These cameras right here are all over the place. So I want you to ask yourself, if that camera moves, how much does the swing change? The answer is it changes a ton. We film straight down the target line. It's the only place where you can see where the golf ball starts, by the way. You, it's the only place where you can see where ball flight is. And for most players and, and most teachers, ball flight is maybe the most important thing we look at when we teach. Where's the ball going? I can also see where they hit it on the club face. And I can also see the arc of the swing through the most important part of the golf swing, which is the impact zone from step five through step seven. And that's what my teachers are trained to do. We all film the same way. I think it's a huge advantage from all the research we've done for many years. Hi, I'm Bobby Cole, a lead master instructor at the Jim McLean Golf School. As a boy in South Africa, I started playing golf when I was 12 years old and uh, managed to play well enough to win the British Amateur at the age of 18, which entitled me to play in the Masters in Augusta, where I still hold the record as the youngest player to have made the cut there. Well, by the time I was 20, I had played golf with such great players as Jack Nicklaus and Arnold Palmer, Gary Player, Lee Trevino, Bobby Locke, Roberto Di Vicenzo, just to name a few. And I was struck at how different they all swung the golf club and a realization for me that there's not just one way to swing a golf club. There are many ways to swing the golf club and that's why the system that Jim uses is such a good one. He teaches within certain parameters. The corridors of success is what he calls it. There are a lot of teachers out there who teach one specific method. I personally think that there's no way you can say there's one perfect golf swing. There are too many great players who have swung the golf club in different fashions. And to give you an example of this, the two players I think who had the most control of the golf shots that I personally played with in tournaments were Bobby Locke and Lee Trevino. Bobby Locke aimed 40 yards to the right and Lee Trevino aimed 40 yards to the left. And yet they both had the ability to get the ball close to the hole. What I like about this DVD is that Jim teaches within the corridors of success. It's an eight-step building block approach. So whether you're a beginner, intermediate, or advanced player, I truly believe everything you need to know to play your best golf is on Jim's DVD. Jim, he encompasses all the aspects that we've talked about. He encompasses the, the physical part, the mental part, the video. I think he's the, one of the best instructors on video knowledge of of what's important in a swing and what's not important in a swing. First and foremost, he's a wonderful teacher and he understands the game. He's worked at it very hard. As far as the elite instruction, the understanding of uh, biomechanical feedback, uh, fitness aspect, club fitting, all of that needs to be addressed if you're gonna teach top level players and get them to perform at their best. And uh, yeah, Jim's done a great job there. It's unbelievable. Jimmy is probably one of the finest teachers that I've known because he used to stand on the practice team when I was teaching some of the pros and listen to everything I said. And when you listen to him, it's like listening to me and me listening to Byron Nelson. He has a, a knack of expressing it. He can play, but he knows how 
He knows the feeling of what, how to hit a shot. I think that's been one of Jim's real strengths is that he teaches to the person's needs, not to some, you know, predetermined formula. I don't think that he's ever fallen into the category of a method teacher. I think that he's built uh, his whole reputation on, first of all, credibility and understanding the golf swing and the golf game. And he's taken everything about golf, the mental part of the physical part, and he's incorporated it into a, a very understandable and a very easily communicated style of teaching. And I've you know, really enjoyed working with Jim all these years. He's best, by far the best teacher in the business. I think he's the leader uh, among all the teachers. If I had to pick a, a pro to go to, I'd pick Jimmy McLean. The eight-step swing is the ultimate unifying theory in golf instruction. Why? Because all of the best methods taught by teachers will fit within the safety zones and the corridors shown in this DVD series. Therefore, the eight-step swing is not a method that teaches the same swing to everyone. It's not one size fit all, but rather it is a system of teaching the golf swing that allows for individual preferences. That means different body types and different levels of talent. I'll describe how we teach golfers at different levels of experience. You'll see that my system for teaching the game is much more inclusive than any method you've tried or read about. However, this doesn't mean there are moves or positions that you may not need to change. You will understand how I analyze a golf swing, how I look at two main things. First, what is the club doing? And second, what is the body doing? and how breaking down the swing can be done much easier. You will also learn the three-step learning process that we use every day at my golf schools. When I first hear about a new method or a new swing idea that's going to be a cure-all and the newest earth-shattering swing method, from all of my studying and researching the golf swing and all the time I've spent with great players and great teachers, it's pretty easy for me to shoot holes in that method or denounce that method quickly because I know much of it is not true. I'm reminded of one of my favorite quotes. The best way to show that a stick is crooked is not to argue about it or spend time denouncing it, but instead to lay a straight stick alongside it. That's what I'm going to do in this DVD series. I'm going to lay a straight stick next to a lot of methods and let you decide which one is straight. You have to watch a lot. You have to, you know, you have to see good players and how they how, how they operate. Uh, uh, a good teacher, you have to relate, as we said. Uh, you have to have, I think a good teacher has to have at least some ability to be able to show how the shot's going to be made. Show his students how he can hit it, how it must be done. I, I, don't, I don't see uh, teachers that, you know, can't hit the shot. Uh, it, uh, but again, you know, uh, Teaching is, uh, to me, is basic fundamentals. This stands the test of time. Gimmicks will come and go. Theories come and go. Basic fundamentals stand the test of time. And there's, whether it be a beginner or a solid player, it's fundamentals. There are a number of things that distinguish the eight-step swing from other systems and certainly from other methods because it's not a method but the biggest thing that I think is different with the eight-step swing from anything else that I've seen is the corridors or the ranges and we call them corridors of success and that means that you have some wide areas that you can swing the golf club in and still be not a good ball striker but a great ball striker so there is no perfect positions on the way back. That's so easy to prove because all you have to do is look at the ladies tour, the European tour, the nationwide tour, or the PGA tour, and look at all the different backswings. And guess what? They're all different. And these are still the best players in the world. You can see that at your club. 
uh, probably the best ball striker at the club has some different things in their swing. It might be fluid and probably is. It probably has some great rhythm to it, but it might have some very different positions. So the corridors and the safety zones are huge distinguishing points from a method or from any other thing that I've seen written. So let me talk a little bit about a corridor. Now, a corridor, say, going halfway back, uh, again, we could go to the perfect mythical halfway back position, and I could go through that in in excruciating detail. But what we see as we tape every player at the, the... plays at Doral in our tour event there, or at PGA West and the Bob Hope and many other events that we go to, is about one-third of the great players go outside or above the plane. About one-third go right on the plane halfway back, and about one-third go under the plane. So there's a pretty wide area that you can be in at the halfway back position. So this is not going to determine where this club is right here, whether you're hitting the ball good. That, that's not going to be it. Now, would we like it to be in a good position going back? Absolutely. If you get too far around, the club gets rolled over, that's going to be in a death position. You get out of the corridor. But the point is, there are lots of places to swing this golf club that are going to be okay, that will work, that will work great. You just need to understand the safety zones and the corridors of success. If you can stay within those zones, you're going to be able to hit some really great golf shots. I'm going to take you through a quick summary of all eight steps. And the steps are in the golf swing. So it's not your pre-shot routine and it's not your setup. So once we get into setup, now we look at step one. And the first move in the golf swing is actually toward the target, slightly forward. And that can be a little movement with the hips or a little hand press that you rebound off. And that takes us into step one, which is about three feet off the golf ball. It's the first move in the golf swing right here, looking to see where that shaft is pointing. I'm looking to see how the body is moving, if there are any mistakes happening early on. Very important part of the golf swing, often very much uh, underrated. We go to step two, which is halfway back. I'm looking at your extension, your right arm position, looking at the shaft where it's pointed. I'm looking at the club face. Uh, So we look at quite a few things right here at step two. This is when the club is the furthest away from the target that will ever be, hopefully. Then we go to step three, which is your three-quarter position, looking at your left arm, the angle of the left arm, how much it's across your chest or whether it's outside, have a dramatic effect on where this club's going, Uh, looking at the club face, left wrist position. Then we go to top of the backswing, where we get to our full coiled, loaded position. And we'll look at the left arm angle at the top. We'll look at the right arm, right elbow. Look to see where the club's pointed at the top of the swing. Cross the line, down the line, or lay it off. From there, we look at step five, and that's transition. What starts the downswing? So we're looking to see what happens as we start down. This would be early step five, and down to our checkpoint position, halfway down. At this place, I'm looking to see how you've recentered your weight, where the club is, whether it's an online delivery, an inside delivery, or an outside delivery. Uh, Looking to see uh, the position of the shoulders and the body. Go to impact, step six, which is is called the moment of truth. And in impact, we see that everything that we had it set up is now changed. Weight's fully over on the left leg. We're pushing off the instep of the right foot. The right knee's kicking in. The shoulder angles are different. The hands are more forward. We go through to early step seven to see uh, post-impact to halfway through, which is a parallel target line position where we're hitting down the line. But down the line means parallel to the target line. We're looking to see how how the club face looks, whether it's flipped over or open, different types of releases. We look at late step seven to see the exit point. Is the club coming out on plane? And then finally, we go to step eight, which is all the way through to the finish position and the rebound. That's when you evaluate. So those are the eight checkpoint positions that I will look for when I study your golf swing.
One thing I've listened to at golf teaching seminars that I've gone to around the world is to teach in positives. Don't teach in negatives. Well, you try telling that to any top coach in any other sport, basketball, football, baseball, and they would laugh at you. There are certain things you just cannot do. And believe me, I'm going to be one of the people that tells you things that you cannot do because if you do do them, you're not going to play good golf. So there has to be a teacher that tells you, no, this is over with. We're not doing this anymore. And what I call those are death moves. If you get into a death position, you are never going to hit good shots. It's just that simple. Now, I have wide areas and ranges that we use in the eight-step teaching system. But once you get out of those areas, those safety zones, then you get into what we call a death position. And a death position is simply a place that you get into your swing, a position that is so bad that you're going to hit bad shots for the rest of your life. Teaching the swing through steps or eight positions is not really new, as I've already emphasized. My eight steps or checkpoint positions are different because of the parameters, the ranges, or the corridors of success that I believe allow for the necessary individualism. Methods that tightly standardize the golf swing are dangerous because few golfers can perform all the movements and the swing positions of that model. Method teachers who use rigid guidelines close their minds and their eyes to other swing actions and body movements that can and, in fact, do work. Hitting every shot according to a rigid method of swinging the club makes playing under pressure tremendously more difficult. My own shortcomings in this area led me to understand that many things can be overdone. Some of the oldest accepted axioms were incorrect, and some teaching adages, such as hitting late, had to be reevaluated. I'm quite sure that no other teacher in the world has taken more lessons than I have. And I say this only to have you understand that I've been there. I've been there with you. This one hit late example shows that some positions, when practiced to an extreme, can cause tremendous damage, even in highly skilled athletes, and in the end, make the game almost impossible. But let me say this once again. Position teaching, breaking the swing into component parts, or teaching through steps is a tremendous accelerator to learning the process if done correctly. Teaching this way is especially good for isolating problems and correcting the faults. Yet positions have limitations, and you must understand this. When swing mechanics become the entire focal point of the teacher, the student then becomes a less skilled player. He becomes a robot. Instead, he's something to be molded into the perfect image in the mind of that teacher. He or she often becomes a confused, tense, and robotic golfer. When a certain position or set of positions become the entire goal, the act of swinging and being an athlete often gets lost in the details. We need to remember that the true swinging action produces the consistency we all desire. I maintain that the corridors of success allow individual differences and individual talent to exist within the eight steps. This freedom will allow extremely talented golfers to do it their way. Remember that whatever you learn in golf, including from me, are ideas, are fundamentals that are based on what I have seen, learned, or experienced. Science tells us that today's laws of physics may be proven wrong tomorrow. So there is no system that may not be improved down the road. In my opinion and my experience, teaching through a series of steps has exceptional instructional value.
I hope you've enjoyed the introductory DVD based on using my building block approach. It's quite probable that some of what I've talked about has surprised you. That's because there's so much misinformation and poor research on the golf swing. One thing you should know is the true fundamentals of a solid golf swing are contained within this series, and they are not likely the fundamentals you've been taught. There is so much incorrect information out there in books, magazines, television, and even on lesson tees around the country. There is very little, if any, understanding of what the top players in the world are really doing. I've talked about methods for years. Prior to writing and producing this DVD series, in a speech delivered to MIT, I wrote that the ideas on popular methods taught in America would receive an F at any college. No resources given, weak research, and little, if any, proof. Most teachers and magazines go from one method to another. A method teacher will teach the same lesson from morning to night, regardless of what student they have in front of them. Many people still believe that the grip, stance, posture, backswing, and follow through that they teach are the true fundamentals of golf. Guess what? Show me the top 100 players in the world, and I'll show you 100 different backswings, 100 different setups, and 100 different follow throughs. In reality, top teaching is matching up what you have, your individual characteristics, and that's what I'll show you in the building block approach. Would you like to learn a one size fits all swing? You won't find that in my golf schools. If you do attend one of my schools in the United States, Canada, or Spain, you will find our instructors using the building block approach. They will look at your swing and work with exactly what you need to improve, just as you can do by watching this series. In the upcoming eight DVDs, you will learn many ways to upgrade your game. Although each DVD will contain one step or stage of the golf swing from my eight step swing, there will also be very important teaching blocks that each DVD has and can stand alone as a training product. I recommend that you buy the entire set and go through each at your own pace. However, you might rather just order one DVD that most closely relates to the things that you're currently working on. That's fine too. So my friends, the keys to building a swing are now within your grasp. The ideas and concepts that I use at my golf schools are revealed for the first time in this DVD series. I'm Jim McLean. Best of luck with your golf.